Hello, dear friends. May God bless all of you. And may He bless you abundantly. God, you should know this. He wants to turn you into the blessing itself. And this is to be abundantly blessed. You becoming the blessing itself. Do you believe in this? Think with me. God is great. And because he's very, very great, do you think he will do anything with defects? Do you think he will create anything badly done? No. Everything God does is perfect. Everything he does is perfect. I admire nature, for example, when I see the seas, the heavens, the stars, the sun, the moon, the forests, when I see the birds singing, when I see the animals, oh wow, everything is God's creation. And we never get tired of admiring His creation. The more you look at his creation, the more you admire it. And it's never the same. It's always renewing itself. You see the colorfulness of sunrise and sunset while the flowers, you never get sick of it. But when you see the works of men, you get sick of it. Yes or no? For example, you buy a brand new car, brand new car, the newest model. You have it for two, three days, two weeks, and later on, it's not the same anymore. Then there's a better car coming, and you go after the better one, right? And the same thing happens over and over again. It's like a cycle because we get sick of it. Everything that human beings do, we get sick of. But what God does is eternal. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's glorious. It's tremendous. So why am I talking about this? Because, you see, Jesus teaches his word he gives us with much love his word he gives us the best he has which is his thoughts his ideas his objectives and he says he who believes in me which means Whoever marries me, whoever makes a covenant with me, whoever is joined to me, whoever submits to my thoughts, whoever follows my ideologies, whoever follows my righteous ways, whoever follows my laws and my commandments, whoever follows my words, this one shall be a fountain springing up, hallelujah. A fountain that springs up is being the blessing itself. God wants to turn you into a blessing. However, however, you've seen that this hasn't been happening. Perhaps in your life it hasn't happened yet. You have conquered a few things, you've conquered the world perhaps, but you are still empty, you are still that void person on the inside. Someone said once, a celebrity, an influencer in the media said, listen, I would rather have a cancer than to have this void I have within me, in the, my chest. It's an unbearable pain. Because cancer, there is still a chance of being healed from. But this void 
There is no medication. There is no psychologist. There is no psychiatrist. There is no one, nothing that can take this away from me. It's because this person doesn't know Jesus. Jesus removes the void and turns people. He replaces this void for a fountain springing up, which is the Holy Spirit. However, pay attention. Jesus, obviously, he, in order to do something great in your life, dear friend, he cannot have 99% of your life. It must be 100%. He has to be the first. He has to be the main one. He has to be the reason of your existence. Otherwise, so you see out there many, many people who say they believe in Jesus, they have a vast knowledge of the Bible, but they are void, cold. I mean, they're unhappy. Jesus said like this, I'd like you to meditate with me on this text because it is very strong. Yesterday we spoke about this and we are going to repeat today again, but I'd like you to think with me to rationalize with me just a bit. Jesus said like this, he spoke about the tree and its fruit, the tree and its fruit. And he said, you shall know a tree by its fruit. By its fruit, you shall know the tree. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And after that, right after, Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. So, let's understand this. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, Perhaps you have said several times, Lord, Lord. And it's nice that Jesus gives a very powerful, a very strong tune to this voice. Because it's not, Lord, I wanted this. No, perhaps you say, Lord. And you repeat yourself, Lord, Lord. However, unfortunately, many do not even understand what this word means. Because Lord means, when I say Lord, Lord, is because I'm a servant. He is your servant, your servant, your servant. I'm your servant. And he said, not everyone, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but... He who does the will of my Father in heaven. And then comes a, an inspiration, a revelation rather, a revelation. He says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Which means, didn't we preach the gospel in your name? Haven't we cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name? Many wonders. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So, you can see that many people do the work supposedly of God in God's name. 
they use God's name, they use God's authority, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, if the person lives in sin, but they use the name of Jesus, those who are in sin and seek, but if they believe in the name of Jesus, they will be healed. It's not because I use the name of Jesus to heal the sick, to preach the gospel, that by default I am of God. No, not at all. I am of God, not because of what I do, but because of who I am. God does not look at our works, per se. Let's say the charitable works we do. But he looks at who I am. If I am of God, then I will do the work of God. But if I am not of God, I can pretend to do the work of God. I can deceive people by doing the work of God. And this has been happening a lot. I've seen this with my own eyes. Many, we said this yesterday, many pastors, bad pastors, that healed the sick, delivered people. They would prosper people with their prayers. They changed people's lives. But they themselves were empty. They themselves didn't bear fruit worthy of righteousness because they were not good trees. They were not good trees. So the fruits are not the gifts or the talents. Fruit is fruit. The fruit means character, truthfulness, you walk according to what is written in the Holy Scriptures. This is fruit. However, to heal the sick, to deliver the oppressed, to prosper the poor, to do wonders, these are gifts. Gifts. From the authority of the name of the Lord Jesus and from His Holy Word. Let's say that I'm a sinner. However, I can preach the word of God, even though I'm a sinner. And those who believe in the word of God will be healed. I can cast out a demon. I can do wonders. Why? Because I use the name of the Lord Jesus. I use the word of Jesus itself. So the name, the word, does the work. But I myself, it doesn't mean that I am of God. You must understand this, dear friends. It's not what I do for God that counts, but it's who I am. It's who I am. God identifies himself as the I am, I am who I am. He is. So, do not be deceived by those who preach the gospel and prophesy, meaning they preach the gospel. It's not to guess the future. They prophesy, they preach the gospel, they heal the sick, they deliver people from demons, they do many wonders. But if they live in sin, God doesn't pay any attention to them. And these are the ones that the Lord Jesus is talking about here. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. And what is it to do the will of the Father? What is it to do the will of the Father? 
to do the will of the Father is to embrace his character, his truth, his integrity. It's to reflect the image of God, to reflect the image of God with a life that is righteous, that is based on integrity, far from lies, far from sin, far from deceit, from everything that is bad, because that's what he says here. In that day, do you know what that day will be? The day which our works will be judged. The talents that he gave us, everything we are going to be judged by what we were given. All of us. I will be judged, so will you. All of us. So those who did many wonders, but they were not, they did not embrace God's cause, let's put it this way. They will not enter the kingdom of heaven. They will not enter it. In that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not done your work? In your name, didn't we cast out demons? Meaning, in the authority of your name, didn't we do many wonders? I never knew you. You used my word. You used of the authority of my name, but I never knew you. And it says more. Depart from me. I never knew you. Now, when you know Jesus, when you know him, you become a fountain because his spirit is the one who reveals Jesus to you. It's the Holy Spirit who points us to Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit who opens our eyes, our understanding, in order for us to comprehend our Lord, to understand our Savior, the Holy Spirit. And when a person, and only when a person receives the Holy Spirit, that they have the character of God. It's what Paul said, he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So you are one, you are married to him, married to him. And obviously, those who see you will see God, and those who see God will see you as well, because you, you and God become one. As Jesus said, the Father and I are one. I and the Father are one. So the person who is of God is one with God. And if they are one with God, their character is blameless. It's a character of high quality. They are truthful, they are honest, they are sincere. They are who they are. They are not afraid to practice what the Lord Jesus says in his word. They do not care about other people's opinion. They are not ashamed of Jesus before the authorities, before people of influence. No, they embrace the character of our Lord. Then yes, they know Jesus. And because they know Jesus, by default, because they are a good tree, they will bear good fruit. As we said yesterday, not everyone who does the work of God are of God. But everyone 
who is of God, they do the work of God. They do the will of God. They do the work and the will of God. Above all, the will of God. Did you understand? That's it. It's clear to you. Now, what worries me? What bothers me? At least inside of the church, when we hold meetings with the pastors, I speak, I teach and preach to them as though they were unbelievers. Because I know that in our meetings, there are many, I don't know them all. I don't know them all. However, I know that in our midst, there are those who cast out demons and preach the gospel and heal the sick. However, they are not of God. But who is and who is not? I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. I do not have conditions or the ability I don't have spiritual conditions to detect who is who. I don't have that. Only God knows. So they stay in the work of God. The bad ones stay in the work for a while or two. And, but there is a moment, though, that the Holy Spirit himself eliminates them. And then these bad pastors leave the church throwing stones at us, criticizing and speaking, and they go on their social media accounts, and they are there speaking lots of things against the church. And then they show who they really are. Just the fact that they are so angry, and they say so much nonsense, and they lie, and they deceive those who follow them because those who are healed by these bad pastors, those who are delivered from demons by these bad pastors, oh, these will follow them. They will follow them. And then you can only imagine the type of church that is formed by these bad pastors. And that's why God says, because I said yesterday that the kingdom of Israel, which God had given them, is a type of the church of the Lord Jesus. However, just as the Jews, the children of Abraham, were misled by their pastors, by their rabbis, by their leaders, by their bad prophets, then the Lord said to them, my people have been lost sheep. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have led them astray, meaning their guides made them go astray. So you see unchurched people without their people fallen throughout this world and trying to come back, but they can't. Why? Why can't they come back? Because they are wounded. They are hurt in their soul. They've been disappointed. Oh, how come the pastor, he, he was of God, he healed me, he cast out demons from my life, I had addictions, look what he did. But that person doesn't have a spiritual perception that is not about the gifts or the many wonders that identify who that person is, but their character, the fruit, the fruit, the Bible speaks of gifts, and fruit, the first fruit, the most important fruit is love. And love is that surrender that the person makes 100%. They do it in a total, complete way and forever. 
it's a surrender that is unconditional. It's love. Those who are of God love as God does because they give their life for their sheep in the case of the shepherds. But if they are not of God, they want to take advantage of the sheep. They want to take what? The meat, the milk. They want to take everything they can for themselves, to benefit themselves. But this is the bad pastor. The bad pastor wants things for themselves. The good pastor wants to give to others what God has given them. So, I, I, I know in whom I have believed. And my character, I'm not here defending myself, but what is very, let's say, what is very transparent in me, it's that I want to give. I just want to give. I want to give regardless of who is watching me. I will always give because this is the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is about giving. It's a fountain, always springing up. It doesn't matter if it's raining, if the sun is shining, the weather. It doesn't matter. They're always giving, always offering, always giving something. But those who are not of God only want to receive. They only want to receive. It's selfishness. Selfishness. And the truth is that you want to evaluate yourself. Do you want to know whether or not you have the Holy Spirit? If you have the Holy Spirit, you are that person who is always wanting to give, always springing up and springing up, even if no one is drinking, but you are flowing, you are giving because you are a fountain. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you want to receive. You want to receive. That's the reality. Either you are a fountain or you are not a fountain. When we receive the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, from their heart will flow rivers of living water. And if this is not happening to you, dear friends, be careful. Because in that day, the Lord will judge. And don't you come with that story, oh, but I do this, I do that. I have a church, I sing, I dance, I praise God, I heal the sick, I, you know what I mean. I prophesy. You do, but you are not. And those who are, do. And those who are not, do not do. They do for themselves. They don't do it for their neighbor. God evaluates us by who we are, not by what we do. Of course, the person is a sinner. They live in sin. They know that they are in sin. They have no peace because sin doesn't allow the person to have peace. Those who live in sin, those who walk in sin, those who practice sin, have no peace. They have no peace at all. They can heal the sick. They can do the work of God, but they have no peace. But those who live according to the will of God, those who have the spirit of God, these ones have peace. It's the first thing that happens. They have peace. Do you know why they have peace? Do you know why? Because they have the certainty they have this absolute assurance. They are convinced by the Holy Spirit himself that all of their sins have been forgiven. They are not guilty anymore. The judge of judges has already forgiven them. The judge of judges already told them, you are my child, my beloved child in whom I am well pleased. Hallelujah. And when a person is of God, they have this voice in here, within them, but when they are not, so, dear friends, pay close attention to what I'm going to tell you. 
I work with the pastors, the assistants, the bishops. I'm always speaking to them, listen, pay attention. We are not going to be judged by our works, but by who we are. It's what Jesus said. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father. What does it mean to do the will of the Father? What's the will of the Father? It's to believe in the Lord Jesus. But those who believe in Jesus, truly, they are. They are what? They are of God. They are of God. Those who truly believe, because they give themselves, they dive in fully. You know, for example, these people, these cheerleaders, these supporters of football teams, they truly embrace the cause. They travel, they sell their house, everything. They sell their soul to the devil, but they want to see their football team winning and making money, even if they are starving themselves. Why? It's a spirit of evil that makes them do this and have this obsession with their teams. Those who are of God, they have the spirit of God. And this obsession to want to please is not to please themselves, but they will want to please the one who delivered them from death, the one who paid the price for their soul. Isn't it so? The person gives themselves fully, just as an unbeliever gives themselves fully to their football club or anything they are crazy about, even for another person in this world. This has to be with God, with the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, my Father, here I am. May your will be done. This is it, dear friends. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone who does the work, inverted comma here, the work of God is of God. But everyone who is of God does the work of God because they do his will. They want to give. They want to give what God has given them. I remember that and then comes one more of our memories which I share with you as a testimony and to see for you to see what God did afterwards. I remember that I was speaking about Jesus to a colleague. I already mentioned this several times before, but it's worth mentioning again because I like it very much. And then one day I was in college and I was talking to him, talking to this colleague of mine, and I thought that he was converting, that he wanted to go to church with me. And then he in a very cold way, said, a dear, pay attention. I came here to study. We are here to study. I didn't come to speak about religion or this. I want to conquer. I have to overcome in life. I have to have a profession. I want to overcome because my family is poor and they depend on me. So I have to... I have to get approved in this test. So I don't want to talk about religion now. When he said that, it was as though he had punched me in my stomach. I was so sad, so disappointed. You know, the college I used to go to was in the city center. And I didn't even want to continue in the class that day. I left and I started walking home. It was night and 
I didn't even want to catch the bus. I wanted to walk all the way home. Back in the day, the streets were very peaceful. Nowadays, it's very dangerous. But I walked home, and as I walked, I was very disappointed, very sad, deeply sorrowful. I don't remember in my entire life since childhood, I don't remember a day that I sobbed and cried. I sobbed. I don't remember having ever done that. But that night I sobbed and cried and cried and sobbed because I was deeply sad. And I was saying, oh my God, come on, I thought that I was going to save this soul and look at this. I just want one soul, my Lord, at least one. Abraham asked you for a son. I just want one soul, just one. Give me at least one soul. And I believed that that young man was going to convert. And then I was there crying and crying and walking, walking and crying. I was... I was 19 years old at the time, 19. I was in college. But then, years went by. I was just 19. Years went by. Years passed by. And I wanted to save souls. And I used to see, I never thought of having a church, building a church for myself. No, I wanted to save souls. That's all. And that's what I want up until today, to save souls. And then, after 13, 12 to 13 years, finally, we started to preach the gospel. I left my work. I left. I was a public servant in Rio de Janeiro in the lottery of the state. I had a very good job. I was in a management position. I also had a job in the statistics department of the state. I used to study in the evening and work for the statistics department in the morning from 7 to 12, and in the evening I would go to school. So. I left my good job in the statistic department, the management position I had for 16 years. I sacrificed everything and I said, Lord, it's all or nothing. Either you are with me or you are not with me. If you exist, I will go breakthrough. But if you don't exist, I will be broken through because I have two daughters and I need these jobs. So I'm going to go in full power. And look at what God has done. Look at what God is doing. Look at what the Holy Spirit has done, dear friends. But it's not because I had the ability to do so, and I had talents and intelligence and wisdom. No, I didn't have any of that. I was never the first one in school. I was always that student, you know, more or less, that passes just in the last moment, in the last second, he's able to pass the test. Very well. But look at what God has done. Look at what the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, my God and Father, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has done. He wants to do the same in your life. I mean, he wants, from the moment that we surrender fully to him, then he fully gives himself to us. He turned me into a fountain, and he wants to do the same with you. He wants to turn you into a fountain, an inexhaustible fountain, so that he, he, and exclusively him may be glorified and exalted. The glory is his, but the instrument he uses is an instrument of clay, like we are. Tomorrow, 
we shall speak more about this. But it's, this is important. So it's not by the gifts and talents that we are saved, but we are saved by the fruits. Those who are a fountain are always giving. Those who are not a fountain, they want to drink, they want to receive. May God bless you and I see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. By the way, I'd like you this Sunday to go to a universal church of the kingdom of God because I sent a letter. I'm sending a letter to each and every one of you. And you will take this letter as missionaries, missionaries of this good mission to those who have fallen throughout this world, okay? This Sunday, please, a special message in the name of the Lord Jesus. May God bless you then, and I'll see you tomorrow.